takes it down to zero. And that, of course, that, that worked very perfectly right there. And so it may not always be uh, exact. So I'm going to scroll back up and we're back to 100%. And let's see what else we got. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Next item, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back up here and we're going to try to figure out what amount should be going from the work in process to the finished goods at this point. So at the end of this point, at the end of the processing, we've, we've got what could be in work in process, two, three, four, nine, five hundred. Then we're gonna basically determine in some way how much is still left, like, like kind of like a physical count. That would be the easiest way to visualize it. If we can count what's still in work in process, it's a bit more complex than that, but we'll talk about that later. We would say what is still left in there and then we're gonna have to say that the other piece got transferred out to the finished goods process so they gave us that in this problem so we're gonna say work in process at the end is the 533,000 so we then need to make this go down to 533,000 and transfer that to the difference to the finished goods so what's going on it's going in the finished goods out of work in process work in process what's not done finished goods what is done what has been transferred during out this period. So this is a debit and finished goods. I'm gonna debit it again to make it go up. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that on top, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Then the amount is just gonna be equal to this two, three, four, nine, five, zero, zero, minus the amount that's gonna be in there at the end, five, three, three, zero, zero, zero. That's what we need in order to, we need this number to go down by this in order to get to that. So that, that's, what's, that's what that calculation is. Now, you might be tempted to do this. You might be tempted to say, uh, instead of putting this number here, you could say this equals this number, minus 533000. Now, when we post that, you're gonna have a problem though, because that'll create a circle reference, because this number is gonna be used to change that number, and we just use this number to make that number. So once we post it, that'll be causing a problem. That's why we have to hard code this one in this case to be two three four nine five zero zero like that uh and then we're going to credit something for that amount so it's going to be debit it's going to go into finished goods it's going to go out of the work in process so that's going to be the credit all right so we're going to post that out so we're going to go over here so this we're looking for finished goods that's one two three four five fifth <laughs> fifth account down on the trial balance so we're looking for the fifth account down here it's going to be in S19, so S19 equals, and we're pointing to this 1,816,500, enter. So finished goods goes up. Then we're looking for the work in process right above it. We're going to credit it this time. It's going out of the work in process. Work in the process has a debit account. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite. Equals in T12, the pointing to H13, making the work in process go down to, what do we hope it goes down to? Hopefully it's going to go down to this number that uh, we wanted to go right there the 533 so let's see if that's the case enter it goes down to 533 just as we uh had planned so that that uh, that's good so the next thing we can do the same type of thing for the finished goods we can try to say okay what how much of the finished goods is still finished and how much of it is then sold this is going to be a similar calculation that we would do in any company that if we bought and sold inventory so how much is not in finished goods how much has been sold and then for therefore transferred from finished goods and finally all that stuff expensed in the form of cost of goods sold meaning all the direct labor all the indirect labor all the stuff we put in the factory overhead and then allocated over to here now is going to be expensed in the form of the asset that we're selling the asset of inventory cost of goods sold so we do the same type of thing we're going to say all right it's going to go out of the finished goods if we sold it so i'm going to copy that and I'm going to skip a line, I'm going to put that on the bottom, and it's going to go into the cost of goods sold. Finally, the expense. That's going to be the debit on top when we sell stuff. This is the normal kind of transaction we think about when we sell things, but it can look confusing because notice we're going to 
uh, calculate the sale here, but this whole problem hasn't been talking about sales at all. It's only been talking about the allocation of cost of the inventory. So now we're doing the cost of the inventory that we sold before we're doing the inventory sale, which can be a bit unusual. Usually we would do the sale first, but we're gonna follow through with this cost flow assumption all the way through. And we're gonna say, what's the amount gonna be? Well, it's gonna be this two, four, three, two, five, that's in finished goods inventory minus this uh, 176, 176001 for some reason, and enter. And that's gonna be the debit and the credit. What does that mean? It means that this number needs to get down to the physical count that we counted to be in there. So this number minus that number will bring it down to the physical count that we counted it to be, hopefully, once we post this out, which we will do now. So cost of goods sold, it's the second to last account down here on the income statement. So I'm gonna scroll over here, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And way over here, uh, cost of goods sold. Now you could try to make this smaller to see it, but uh, it's pretty far out. I'm not sure it's gonna work. Have to be really small. All right, so maybe maybe we can see that. So it's probably pretty small. So we're way over here, cost of goods sold, way over here on AE16. That equals this 2,256,499. And that populates here then in uh, the trial balance. There it is. And then we're going to post the other side to the finished goods inventory. Here it is there. Finished goods inventory, like a fifth account down on the trial balance. Therefore, it's going to be the fifth account on the general ledger. So here it is here. We're going to credit it this time. There's the number. We can't quite see the name. That's okay. So this equals in cell T20, that 2,256,499, bringing it down to this 176,001, 176,00. That number looks familiar because that's what we counted it to be. That's what we wanted it to end up at. Now we're gonna do this one last thing. We're gonna post the sale for the period here, just so we have the sales number because we recognize the cost to get sold there's going to be sales related to that. Notice the sales number has nothing to do with the cost of goods sold number because uh, that's our sales price. Whatever, however we determine what the sales price was, that's how much we actually uh, got or received on credit, in this case, for the sales made. So related to this journal entry, remember whenever we make a journal entry, we usually, uh, you know, debit account receivable, credit sales, and then do this. Debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory when we sell inventory. So we're going to debit, in this case, the accounts receivable for the sale instead of cash because we sold it on account. And it's going to be 2500000 and we're going to credit to the 2500000 and let's post that to the, or let's record that to the sales, which is our income account. Uh, sales revenue has a credit balance, so we're going to do the same thing to it, make it go up. Sales revenue pretty much always goes up. We're going to post this out then at this time now. So we're over here in 016, 016 equals, and we're going to point to that 2,500,000. There's that. We're going to go to the sales. That's going to be a way, that's going to be like the third to last account in the dark blue. First dark blue, last account overall, way over here. And it's going to be a credit. And again, we could try to make it small so we can see it in both sides, but that's pretty far. All right, so I can kind of see it there. It's pretty small, but we're way over here in cell uh, AF9. Uh, that equals this credit way over here in H19, making this amount go up. And we can see that on our trial balance. If we make this large again, we make this large. There it is on our trial balance. So now we're back in balance. We can see that uh, what happened from this transaction from our sales. Here's our sales, 2500000 Cost gets sold, 2,256,499. So we have 243,409 from that part of our uh, sales minus the cost of those goods that are sold. Now next is good to take a look at the cost of goods manufactured in terms of, of a formula here, in terms of like a form. So uh, if we're gonna figure out the cost of goods that were manufactured and use that then to figure out the cost of goods sold, those are gonna be uh, very familiar calculations. We're going to start off with the direct materials you and I'm going to take this from the work in process account. So what we're basically doing is, is we're saying, okay, here's the work in process, which includes this work in process for the direct materials that were used as was mentioned in the problem. Then we're going to add to that the direct labor, direct labor. We're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to say this equals and look at that work in process account and figure out the amount that was transferred over for direct labor. And it's right there, the 780,000, 780, 780,000. 
And then of course we have the last piece of the production, the overhead that was applied. So I'm going to say that equals and scroll over to that amount again. There's the uh, overhead. It's the uh, 936,000 and we have that. So we're going to have the total manufacturing if we add those up now. So we will of course use the trusty sum function equals the SUM and shift nine and add this plus this plus this. That's the total manufacturing cost during the month. We're going to add to that the beginning work in process. I'm going to abbreviate what was in there at the beginning of the month. And once again, I'm just going to say equals. And that's basically coming from the general ledger. This is what we had in there before we started taking a look at anything. And that's going to give us the total uh, work in process, total cost of work in process. That's what we have that we could then allocate equals the sum of, whoop, I have two equal signs there, equals the sum of these two items here. And then we're going to subtract from that less ending inventory, ending whip. And that, and again, we, we could think about that as kind of like a physical count. It's going to be a bit more calculated to figure out, you know, what's left in there, which we'll talk about later. But they gave us that in uh, this problem to be the 533. So if we go back over here, basically, we said that it was going to end up to be the 533. And that's how we figured out this number to take it down to. So we can think about this in, in our problem. That was like the physical count that we brought it down to. Therefore, the cost of good goods manufactured that's what we're trying to get here it's going to be this number the stuff that was available in work in process less the amount that was um, still in work in process at the end that's the amount that was the cost of goods manufactured not to be confused with the cost of goods sold this is the stuff that went out from work in process to ending inventory being then available for sale now we can use that number in place of what's usually the purchases number to uh, figure out the cost of goods sold. So like if we buy and sell stuff, that would we usually buy things and purchases. <laughs> in this case, we don't buy things, we make things. So this number is going to replace the purchases item basically in our cost of goods calculation for a company that produces things versus one that simply buys and sells things. So we'll start off with beginning finished goods inventory. And that's of course going to equal what's in finished goods at uh, the beginning. So we're going to go over here, finished goods inventory, started off with this 616. So that's what we have in finished goods inventory. Then we're going to put there, usually we would put in a, manu in a, in a if we bought and sold inventory, purchases but we this is where we're going to stick with this number that we just calculated because we don't purchase stuff we make stuff here so that that's how this number ties in to the cost of goods calculation i'm going to go ahead and under that line that that gives us the cost of goods available so i'm going to say that that equals the sum of 616 and the 1 million 5 that's the cost of goods available less we're going to say the less the ending finished goods inventory. And you might be saying again, how would we know what that number is? And, and in real life, we, I mean, we could think of it the most simplified way to think about that is we would count it. And uh, the problem gave us this number. We wanted to end up at this number here. And, and that's how we figured out to do this to it. So this was the ending count, 176001 there. And that's how we derived the cost of goods sold, which would then be equal to this number, the cost of goods available, minus the less the uh, Indian inventory, the physical count. And there is that number. I'm going to go ahead and underline this. And there's those two calculations.